Hello guys, welcome to a very exciting video. Today we will do something server related. Yeah, we will build ourselves a NAS. Finally! Yes, after who knows how many years I wanted a NAS, I'm actually building a dedicated NAS. Now in fact, I do have a server that I use every day for half a year. And it it made zero problems. Let me show you what it is. And here we go. It is this Dell Optiplex from 2008 or something. And I got randomly the idea, uh, just for the for the lols, I create a NAS because, well, why not? Just for shits and giggles. I never intended to use it, really like seriously, but. I started doing it and half a year later here we are it is it is being used as a server just the way I presented it to you in the YouTube video back then it, it actually continues continued to work as a server and it, 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 it's been fine it really has been fine now it is a little ghetto first of all here the USB thumb drive that contains the operating system it's been working fine. Um, it's having three hard disks, all three one terabyte, all three used, back then even used, heavily used. <laughs> so pretty ghetto, yes. So if it's so great, why upgrade it? Why replace it? Well, the other day I looked at the web interface of the server and I found out that it, it is getting filled up. I only got 200 gigs free and I think with the next time machine backup of my iMac here it's gonna be around 150 something or 160 so we're getting dangerously close to filling this guy up and so yeah I thought it occurred to me why not replace this ghetto server and actually create a proper one so this is the web interface and I didn't lie to you, here you can see the uh, system bias date is from 2008, yeah I didn't bullshit you, we got an old Intel Pentium dual core, which is fine, you know, the hardware is fine except, except the RAM, we only have 2 gigabytes of RAM, as you can see even less. And right now it's doing pretty good, 85%, that, that's pretty fine, because under load it easily like goes to 99%, it's pretty, pretty much maxed out all the freaking time, and that doesn't help with performance actually, that's quite the opposite, it just throttles this, this, this server down to horrendous transfer speeds, like it, sometimes when, when two devices access this guy, it gets unbearably slow, like... <laughs> That's that's a big issue. The RAM is just not enough. What's even more ghetto is that I now looked at the hardware requirements for Sigma NAS, which I use, and uh, as you can see, a multi-core processor is recommended, 64-bit, which we have, but uh, a minimum of 8 gigabytes of RAM. A minimum! <laughs> and... Uh, like, uh, as you can see, there are 2 gigabytes, it's the absolute minimum. And 512 is maximum minimum for embedded platforms, but just look at that. If we're using ZFS, what I do, we recommend 8 gigabytes or greater. <laughs> so, yeah, this is ghetto. So, you know, uh, it is not a great server. It's, it's, it's been fine, but it, it's been slow. So, we will we will change that. So, that's for... The introduction of my Sigma NAS. Here we have the most important piece of the puzzle. That's a Silverstone DS380 NAS case. So what I can do here is I can have up to 12 drives, which will be way, way more than I need, but eight hot swappable drives um, in this case. And it will have also great ventilation. It's just a, a pretty good NAS case. Next here we got uh, all these components, we got a 32 gigabyte 
solid state drive PCIe, no USB flash drive anymore, um, a real proper boot drive. Then we get here just a fan from Architect that will be just the exhaust fan. Um, we got 8 gigabytes of RAM, um, one 8 gig stick I think is in here, at least I hope it is. Yeah, it probably is, uh, because it says one time 8 gigabytes there. Now, uh, if I'm not happy with the performance, I'll buy another one, then I'll have 16, and it will be way faster, um, or more than I'll ever need. And I suppose, you know, I was just getting by with these 2 gigs, so having 8 will probably just blow me away with the speed increase. <laughs> so, this is a very important piece of the puzzle here. And, next up, the processor. Um, this is a Celeron. Why a Celeron? Well, first of all, I know some of you will scream, why not AMD? Well, first of all, Sigma NAS wants, or, or says they prefer Intel processors. They just strongly recommend Intel processors, so I decided not to take any risks and just go with an Intel. But also the Celeron, because in my case, the processor just doesn't really matter. It's, it's really not that important. But what's important for it is that it doesn't consume a lot of power. So if I stick an i3 in here, which will be first of all way too fast, uh, it will consume more power than this dude, which will be really slow, but it will not use a lot of uh, power because this machine is on 24-7, so the power consumption matters. Um, it's really just a basic chip, two cores, I think four threads or something. Um, the latest... Celeron, just then, just to give you an idea of what it really is, it's a G4920, 3.2 gigahertz. Yeah, nothing crazy, but it's new, so I got warranty on it. Um, and yeah, it, it's just a normal cheap processor, and it will do the job. And it will surely be faster than the Pentium Dual Core I'm rocking in here right now. Um, then we get here the motherboard, that's a Asus. Prime H310 and it's it requires the 300 series uh, chipset so um, we are safe and sound here just your mini ITX motherboard and a peak Y a 300 watt power supply should totally be sufficient and it's also not a like no name brand piece of crap power supply so uh, as you can see, the most important components, the hard drives, are not here yet. Um, I ordered three 2 terabyte drives and uh, they are not here yet. But what we can do is, we can start assembling this server, figure out how everything mounts, uh, install the processor and everything, and maybe install Windows and just run a Cinebench just for the lolts, but uh, um, I, I think I'm just gonna do it the getaway. I'm gonna rip out the hard drive out of this MacBook. This MacBook here has a Windows 10 hard disk. Yes, pretty weird, I know, but um, if this Windows 10 boots, I can just see how it performs just for the lols. Beast Celeron 2 core, yes! <laughs>
Okay, we got the Intel stock cooler installed and I think the design is just a piece of shit. Uh, it is a very bad design. But I got it screwed down and it doesn't go anywhere so now it's gonna stay and, and all fine. So now let's connect the CPU fan. That is important. Where did it go? CPU fan. Yep, that's right next to it here. Very convenient. And now the CPU fan can turn. And in my case here, like I would recommend a better cooler over this any day. Any day. <laughs> but in my case here with the server build, it's it, the stock cooler is fine. Orientation is correct. Not so much though the build quality of the of the latch here. Um, it just wouldn't snap, so you have to do it manually. That confuses sometimes people. So here is the piece. I like that a lot. It's it's so nice. All the, the SATA ports are back here, uh, and uh, yeah, that is that is really really good. What I'm just thinking right now is like, why does it always have two ports to plug in? We get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen, fourteen, six. We get so many SATA ports. So. Huh? What? I just want to take you, let you take a look inside of here. We get here all of these uh, case fans, which is just awesome from the company to ship with three case fans. So this will have a really, really nice airflow. Something Apple should definitely reconsider in some of their products instead of just making them thin as fuck. So, yeah. Now I see where the motherboard should go. All right, yeah, there was, there was, there was previously no chance getting to there. So uh, now I can can get there with ease. This is an additional bracket for two and a half inch drives, which I will also take out right now just to get better access in there. Uh, it also feels all pretty sturdy. It doesn't look that pretty from the inside, but it doesn't need to. It's, it's just a server case. So here is the, the bracket. Feels pretty sturdy. Now we have to know the orientation. We don't want to put it in upside down because we don't want to do that again. So uh, the motherboard goes in like this. And so we have to put it in this way. And now we can put it in and I'll probably cut myself again. I always do with these things because they are so annoying. And yeah, let's just do it. Oh, I see a problem. Oh no! Oh shit! Oh no, oh no, oh no. We got here a bent. Oh no! I've never had that happen to me on any PC build, but uh, look at that. This is not straight. Nope. Looks like it's been dropped or something. Um, yeah, that, that really sucks. That really sucks. Now, it doesn't appear to be affecting anything different, so I will not be the uh, angry Amazon customer and send it back and ask for a refund and just be a... Yeah. But still, that's, uh, that's a problem because this plate can't go in straight, so I have to kind of pull this out a bit. And see if uh, I can fix that. Well, that, that that's a pity. That's a pity. Let's uh, fix that our way, of course, with this guy. Yeah, it's better already. But of course, I can't get it as 
good as as a you know in the factory where they should have done it. So yeah, I don't know why maybe they dropped it or something. But that's yeah. I'm gonna write that in the review. It's uh, a little a little sad. But now it's straight again, and now I can put the the shield in. And if it isn't in all the way perfectly, yes, uh, you know what? I don't I don't care. Uh, no, I'm no hmm, can't think of the word right now. One of these persons that just needs to have everything perfectly, like a perfect a perfectionist. I'm not one of these, so stuff like this doesn't bother you when you're not one of these. So yeah, let's just. Put that in and, and deal with it and live with it, you know. Now they actually want me to install the the power supply next. But I'm not gonna do that. I will install the muddy board. And the standoffs are already in. Because you can only use one type of motherboard, so they pre-did that. Let's see if I can get it aligned here. Yeah, it looks okay. The holes all line up. So, this issue here with the bent frame is really not an issue anymore. Everything is nice and accessible here. So, yeah, we will not think about that any longer. Still, though, I will not forget that. That sucks, actually. How many goddamn different screws? Where should I know in which one to use? We'll use here the RAM, the RAM uh, plastic for the screw organization, so that they don't fly off the table and hide alongside with my friends over there. Let me show you. Here's the wasps, and yeah. I mean, uh, they're dead, and this guy is, uh, yeah, it's sad, but I don't want them in my wall, because I'm sleeping here, and you know, that's uh, not something you want. Okay, on with the build. I got a little pro tip for you, if you use this case, connect the front panel connectors before you put the motherboard in, because right now they're really hard to access. They're not terrible, but it's, well, it will be a lot easier if you just connect it before you put the motherboard in, so you can maybe place the motherboard here and then connect everything and then put it in. It's gonna be way easier. For the first time in years I will in fact use a zip tie. The last time I used a zip tie was on my main PC build in 2015. So yeah, you can definitely see the situation is serious. I think we're done with the essentials. We get the motherboard in, we get the power supply in, the fans are all in, we got everything wired. 
So we are in fact ready for our first boot up of this thing. And uh, I hope it posts because the last thing I want to do is rip this motherboard out and maybe update the BIOS or something because the the CPU doesn't doesn't want to work with it. So yeah, but uh, we'll see. I'm a little uh, uh, anxious since I built this Ryzen here because this had this problem. So, but yeah, I think it will be good. So uh, this fan will not turn, so we'll not be shocked if it doesn't. And yeah, let's see if it even this does something. Okay, I now know what the people mean with the, with the CPU fan of Intel's being noisy. Any posts? Yes. Woo! Asus in search of incredible. Yes. Woohoo! Success! It's always rewarding when you finally boots after you've ripped your hair out with all the cables and stuff. So, this CPU fan doesn't turn. Ah, uh, this fan doesn't turn. Oh, it does now! What? Meh! Silver Snow, what cases fans do you use? I want this to spin all the time. I don't have to, like, kick start it, you know? Um, well, never mind for now. We got here a 4920 G4920 Celeron, 3.2 gigahertz, 8 gigabytes of RAM, everything fine, yes, success. All right, we get bad news. For some reason, it doesn't want to boot the Windows 10. I don't think the hard drive is dead. I think it just doesn't want to do it. Ever since it's been in the MacBook, it just uh, doesn't want to boot on a PC anymore. Well, guys change of plan. Um, I in fact don't have a USB drive with Windows 10. I lent that to a friend and I'm actually yes too lazy to make another one. And I just thought you know I would only install Windows 10 for just this one stupid Cinebench that I put in my spreadsheet and it's it's getting obliterated anyway by all the other chips because it's a Celeron. Uh, so I thought you know what just whatever. Uh, leave that idea and I will install this this card anyway and uh, just install Sigma NAS so yeah so what I'll do is I'll install this card and then I'll put everything back together nicely because the only thing we need to do then is wait for the hard drives and put the hard drives in which I can do without having to um, get inside here anymore so yeah how do you get this out and why do you need these screws? I don't know guys, uh, I really don't know. Yeah. There it is, the classic fail. Probably you saw it coming miles away, but I was too stupid, yes. Um, this guy right here is a PCIe thing, SSD. Well, do you see a PCIe on this board? No! <laughs> ah, this really sucks. But yeah, you learn this way, just how it is. So, this drive doesn't work. Let me just show you. So I can't boot Windows, I can't even show you anything about the system. I don't have my NAS hard drives yet, so uh, all I can do right now is I can tidy it up nicely and just, you know, wait for the hard disks. This is what I can do. This is everything. <laughs> so, yeah, let me just get some more SATA cables and uh, then actually figure out the the way this, this this works. I mean I have no idea how this how this system works with this like there's so many SATA cables it's incredible. So I figured something out that was very helpful. All of these SATA ports have got a left and a right side and the right side here is the primary for the SATA ports, SATA drives. 
And don't ask me what that, that one here is. That is an SAS drive. So, I don't know, guys. I don't know what an SAS drive is, but what I know is I don't need the left one. So that, that confused the crap out of me, all of these goddamn SATA connectors. Well, theoretically, I should just be able to push that away from, from it. And I now know what they mean. It is a really tight fit in here. Check this out here. Everything's like just, just got enough space. So I'll have to use some force here to move the cables out of the way. I thought it needs to go further, but uh, no, it's actually, it's actually fine. Okay, so as you can see, without removing this tower here, there's no way you can get anywhere in there. No chance. Okay, let me show you. I just finished the wiring job. It's looking rough, but everything's correctly connected. We get all the SATA here we need. These two are for um, the upper two kind of control unit thingies, which have SATA 1, 2, 3, and um, that's what we will need. I also connected the fourth because I have it, you know, I don't want to mess with with all of this anymore. So if I have a fourth hard drive, like I can just put it in and be fine. Um, I decided, yes, I will indeed use again a USB drive for the boot volume. Um, that's got to do with the fact that uh, I don't have one that I can use here. A two and a half inch drive and also I'm not having a uh, another SATA port uh, this this is also a problem so I only have four SATA ports with this motherboard which will be fine for my server needs but um, you know I will never probably have more than four hard drives but that that's what I want to have for my for my storage drives not for my boot drives I will just fuck it and and use a uh, USB drive um, and making server backups anyway from the configuration so uh, should be good and yeah with all of this in I will boot it up again obviously we will not see any hard drives showing up because it's it's just uh, connected but having no hard drive but what I want to know oh What the fuck was that? I exactly know what it is. It's the fan hitting a cable. Great shit. Yeah, alright, let me just address this issue. So, the guy that's not happy is this. And you can see immediately what's going on. We get here this little guy poking through. Alright, it's always coming back. That's... Uh, Awesome, but now I think, yes, good, so that was an easy fix, hopefully it's not coming back, but I will hear it out immediately if it does. So let's put that back on its normal position, it's, it's on its head, so let's do that, okay, so the power supply is on the top here. That's pretty good, so the hot air can just be blown out. And yeah, what can I say? I mean, the only thing I have to do right now is put the side panel back on, and it doesn't even need to be off again, because uh, it's everything is, is, is now hot swappable. So I don't need to go in here anymore. Get everything labeled from 8 to 1. And I can't wait to get the hard drives in here. I also um, tried to tidy these cables just a little tiny more, but I really didn't have too much of a success. It's just, there's just so many. Oh yeah, I also put this thing back in. Apple would really appreciate this design. I mean, you have to take out this, then this, to get just access to anything. Like, if you want to do a RAM upgrade, it, I don't know, maybe you could even, like fiddle your way down there all the way to the RAM slot but uh, it is a pretty pretty harsh way um, down there 
We are getting there, but I'm still not quite that happy with my results. These fans turn freely, no issue. Hiver. Hear that noise? It's like rubbing against something. So this is my fix for it. I put a zip tie around all of these cables that I just could get into the zip tie. And this seems to be doing the job. We get here nothing blocking the fan. This is coming a little closer to it, but can easily fix that. But yes, now it's now it's completely free. So yeah, that was important. Oh yeah, and I forgot uh, to put in the glorious silver stone logo just to finish it off. Looks kind of unfinished with the missing logo here. All right, so the server is now booting Sigma NAS for the first time, and it's looking like it's booting just fine. Let's see, get this four gigabyte USB stick doing the job just fine so this will be the setup well almost it's plugged into the network I wanted to uh, set it to a IP address of course a static one alright we got a success here uh, I've changed it to the internal number 10007 and matter server is 10.0.0.5 so these two guys are not getting in their way which is good let's hop over to my main machine here is by the way the old server just gonna show you here 10.0.0.5 and now um, when we enter this and we are in fact here in our new server yep there you can see that's already looking way better than <laughs> than the other one I'm gonna show you the other one just so you can compare these two that is oh right now it's not too bad actually but uh yeah this is uh, this is not so great but yeah this is this is way better obviously uh, so yeah the next thing we have to do is change the host name because this is right now also called Sigma NAS and my old server is also Sigma NAS so yeah these guys are um, called the same. We got a big fail here, as you saw. Right up. I, I, I'm really pissed. You know, I, I plug the drive in, and and it just makes a clicking noise. And and I thought already, no, please not, please not. And it showed up as zero gigabytes. So yeah, it's it's dead. I plugged it in, as you saw, in Crystal Disk Info, and it didn't even show up. So yeah, awesome. Uh, so I'm sending that back, and I'm on my way getting a drive from a local store. That's what I should have done in the first place. You know, I was so pissed because the the shipping here they did is just incredibly unacceptable. Wait a minute. This box for three hard drives and then they just package it with like one piece of bubble wrap. I mean, they always 
overdo it with these bubble wraps. Like on, on devices, it really doesn't matter. But on this one device where it matters, a hard disk, please just package it right. And, and I paid so much money. I paid 240 euros for these hard disks. And then I'm getting them shipped with like this. So actually the smarter way would have been sending back all of them. You know, just being the safe side and getting one and, and, and fine. But yeah, you know me. Um, I didn't think that before. So uh, I'm sending one back. I'm keeping the others for now. I hope they don't fail. I mean, I've got a warranty anyway. So um, I, I thought, you know what? I, you know, the drives are great. They're NAS great drives. And I think the store doesn't have NAS great drives. But fine. Yes, I'm gonna get myself here now a two terabyte drive and then 54 and RPM. And, and so now, well, I've got two NAS drives and one normal one. I mean, it's not like the normal ones fail immediately. Uh, so yeah, uh, but still very, very annoying and upsetting. Like, I'm not sending this back and ordering another one and wait another five days just that they ship it with like the same shit, with the same shit package as this. And then it's probably dead again. No, I'm not supporting this company that sold that. I think it's not even Western Digital's fault. Like, it's not, not even there. Like, they didn't sell that. It, it, like, it's one different reseller, so. Ah, annoying. And we're getting it sorted. So, I got the hard drive. It is, in fact, the exact same as I ordered from Amazon. It's the same 2 terabyte Western Digital Red NAS drive, so... Everything fine, 54 RPM, everything good, but, but I got another story. I know this video is going on and on and on, but it just always happens, you know. Um, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't uh, stop. You can see there, it's pretty new actually, May 2019. Um, all right, so what, what the hell am I talking about? Well, I was, I was bringing this to the cashier's desk and the, it was like inside uh, such a plastic protective thing that they always need to take off with a key. And the lady there un unwrapped it and then she put it very harsh on the table, like duk. And I said, I don't want to be rude, but I, I am not going to take this now. And she's like, what, why? I mean, first of all, this is a, a, a tech a tech store, you know, people should know their stuff there, but <laughs> they don't. Well, she said like, no, um, uh, I said, no, I'm not going to take it. And she's like, whoa, why, why? I mean, there, there can't be anything wrong, blah, blah. And she, I was like, hard drives don't like that, you know, when, you, when you're being harsh with them. And she said, okay. And, and so what now? And I'm like, yeah, can I just get another one and, and take that one? And they like, mm -hmm. yeah, but I'm gonna talk to like a colleague first. And <laughs> he's, th then the colleague came over and he said, yes, he, he finally know, knew what's up. Yeah, she, you shouldn't do that, but it, it will be probably fine. And you have warranty anyway. And I'm like, no. I already came here only because somebody mistreated a hard drive and now I'm here because of this reason. And I, I, I'm not gonna take it home, plug it in and it doesn't work and then I drive all the way back and return it and drive back home. I'm not gonna do that. And they were like, all right, yeah. Then just get yourself another one and unwrap it yourself and you'll be good. And I'm like, yeah, okay, fine, fine, everything good. So I went back. I got this one, I unwrapped it myself from this box and, and everything's good. So uh, yeah, a little story to this hard drive. So now we can finally go home, put it in the server and have fun. So our server is complete, I had some troubles setting up the storage pool but that has mostly got to do with the fact that I just forgot how to do it because I 
did it just half a year ago, but I got it done, I got it configured, and the first files are here, now these are not time machine backups yet, they will be in the future, but uh, my Call of Duty is on the new server, and only the German guys will understand this joke, unfortunately. It's called Ananas, that means pineapple in English. It just doesn't, you know, the, the joke just doesn't make sense in English, but uh, get NAS. That's the joke. Anyway, uh, this is the new NAS, appropriately called with the letter A here, <laughs> and the other one, Sigma NAS, the letter X, which will be taken offline probably tomorrow when everything is migrated over. And as you can see, we got here six terabytes of storage. That is pretty darn good. Already quite some RAM use, so they weren't kidding about the the RAM. Um, I might really swap in like another eight gig stick in the future. Um, but for now, like as I expected, the uh, the read and write speeds are just way way better than the old one, uh, the Sigma NAS server. Um, I just want to show you real quick here. Set FS and information and. Just like on the old Sigma NAS, the Anna NAS <laughs> now has the same here, RAID set 1 with hard drive 1, 2, and 3, and everything is fine. So we get a redundancy of one drive can fail, and that is fine for me. And we got a copy speed of 112. It doesn't break 112, but I tell you, that's way way faster than the old server if I were to copy that to the old server hmm. well you know what why not try it we got that much space anyway so yeah you can hear the hard drives growling I really wouldn't want them in my room here uh, let's quickly just hop over to the old server and copy that on here yeah this is what I've been dealing with most of the time. Oh, now it's especially bad. Probably like the Mac Mini is doing a time machine backup or something. Yeah, as you see, I mean, 50 is still not bad. But uh, like over 100 is, uh, I'll take that over this any day. And as you can see, it's very, very unsteady. It's like going up and down and up and down. So yeah, this is what I had before. The old Dell is now getting slowly but surely retired. It's done a great job. But it's time to say goodbye and embrace my new Ananas dedicated NAS server. It's surely a little louder than the Dell, but we get a lot more fans on here as well. We get two here. We get one here from the power supply, we get the CPU fan, and we also got this one. So, yeah, this is uh, definitely more cool. And the hard drives, by the way, stay pretty cool. I mean, they weren't really doing all that much, to be honest. Uh, but, to just show you real quick. Nice 34, 31 even one. So, yeah. So I'm currently migrating some data, it's about 310 gigabytes, and of course it's you know coming off of the Dell server, so the uh, read and write speed isn't crazy, although you can see it's, <laughs> sometimes it, it gets close to 100, but previously again it was down like 30 or something, I don't really know, uh, but as you can definitely see the... <laughs> The Dell, which is on the right hand side, the left one is the new one, and the Dell is on the right, it's definitely running out of RAM again. Ooh, something very new. <laughs> the processor now already, well, it does a little more than usually, but, well, the processor was actually fine, but as you see, the RAM is just awful. You, you, you are running out of RAM all the freaking time. So, when you hop over here to our new NAS, things look way differently. We get here 
11%, 21% usage of CPU, and as you can see, 3 gigabytes used, still a lot uh, left. Um, and yeah, I mean, it is bottlenecked by the Dell, so it's currently just chilling a bit and copying the files over, but yeah, when you look at the transfer speed here, here it is uh, on the actual machines. Here it has around 90, well now it's back to 70 coming in and and here about 70 coming out. So as you can see this is exactly the speed of the Dell. So this could do more but obviously the Dell is <laughs> the Dell is bottlenecking it. Well, it's been reliable and I've been dealing with it uh, and it was fine but now when I'm having way faster speeds and way more capacity also you know six terabytes is way more than previous previously um, this is this is fine for me so taking about an hour yeah that that seems that seems fair the NAS build been a huge success. I still need to move into the office, but that's only a matter of unplugging the Dell, plugging this in, and uh, yeah, powering it back on, and should be all all fine. I think this little 300 watt power supply is up to the task. I mean, it only needs to power a really low watt CPU and and some hard disks, and so yeah should be sufficient and yeah this is it looking all good and do I recommend this case well yeah surely uh, I will regret buying it once I upgrade the RAM again maybe in the future but uh, <laughs> I mean maybe I can feel my way down there and and install the RAM but uh, it's definitely definitely not gonna be that easy but anyway, for now, now that it's done, it's nice and subtle, just a black box, nothing crazy. And it does the job. So, I will give you maybe an update on how the server works in like another half year or so. But I suppose it should be trouble free, just like the Dell. Even more so because it's brand new. So, yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and see you in the next video.